Okay, so in this very short video, what I'm going to do is show you how to build the E2FS progs statically from a source code in order to put it in, for example, a busy box based RAM disk in case you need to do some consistency check or some modification of file systems. For example, if you want to use FSEK or want to use uh, Tune2FS, etc. So what we're going to do is show how we build like the latest tag of the E2FS progs from source code because BusyBox does not prov provide it. We're going to show a very simple script and uh, that shows how to work around some annoying issues with auto tools. Uh, there are many configurations and usually when someone wants to go and configure things by themselves, then with every project there is another uh, caveat so we're just going to show something that's like very quickly build and get the work done for you and we're going to show on the way some issues that you will ex see in many projects when you actually build with gzxc which i take away from this is hey if you really want to use something like on a very small ram disk or something like that you can link with another libc but this is not what we're doing here we're giving like the motivation this uh, lecture by the way is part of like a set of lectures or something that i refer to from my courses and uh, when i just want to keep things like uh, on time and i always give like extra references okay so this is one of them that i just found is really needed and also in many projects that i have done that have to do with some uh, bring up or file system optimization we're going to go ahead and do a minimal testing in Cheroot or cross Cheroot. And essentially, and you can quit now, but you should not. And just know that this is motivation for understanding how stuff works. If you have a team that uses like a proper build system, like the Octo project, for example, then you would really want to use their expertise and not try to be smart. But many times you will want to do smart, especially if you're building your own systems, whether they're Debian based or not. So to have this video being short, I made like a short script that actually does that. So let's go ahead and look at it. This is what I cloned from the official E2FS progs repository. You can also find like a tarball in SourceForge. And I already checked out and the 1.47 tag. So if you see like what's going on on like the log, and this is the demo tag that I checked out, uh, the demo branch, and this points to this version. Okay. I'm going to look at this small script that does the following things it calls build for several tuples which runs over some tuples that you can see that are like the prefix of a cross compile for several architecture we have here x86-64 uh, arm64 uh, risk 564 and um, arm linux okay and we're just going to make a directory for the build so that we don't contaminate the source code and for the install, okay? And deliberately, I redirect the error in order to discuss some GLC uh, shenanigans with, uh, when you build static libraries. So we're going to use this version, this function that also does installation. And I'm just telling you that usually when you did this, unless you do some extra configuration, it will try to still write things into some slash dev or system D and just a bug in the implementation. Okay. Even if you do like a build to something else. So don't worry about errors that you will see over there. So basically this function receives two parameters. One is the build uh, uh, folder and the other is the installation folder. Okay. That's like a second argument. And we're going to run from the source code. This is how you do configuration. Like you don't do like with make O equal something like in the Linux kernel in BusyBox, etc. But you just go to the directory and then run the source directory slash configure in your target build directory. We provide LD flags dash dash static. There are so many 
ways in so many way, um, versions of auto configure to actually provide how to build uh, statically this is why it's a lot of times a challenge and in many projects you would just go ahead and provide the ld flags yourself there used to be some other things enable static disable share it works on some project it doesn't work on some project and this is like a modern and relatively uh, reliable way of doing that dash dash host essentially it would be like your cross compiler but you would want to strip the trailing dash from the cross compile variable so after that we're going to do make and we're going to say that for like the installation there and uh, we want to when you do like make install we'll do install there and we'll do install strip to automatically go ahead and strip like the, the folders the, the contents otherwise we'd need to do something this is hacky this is not completely accurate it does the work like this like we configure we make and if like we don't install uh, we will not have stripped binaries by default so we want to find the executable binaries but folders are executable as well so we're going to not search for them and then we're going to call the cross compiler strip on them so this it for example there are also shell files that are executable so it will fail on that and it's not a big deal so i decided to do uh, this installation thing and let me go ahead and just run the script okay so i'll pause the recording and then i uh, will resume with, uh, after it's done 